I know you're listening. You're here because something isn't right. Something feels twisted, upside down. Things don't add up. Hello, human. Welcome to our twisted universe. In this episode, we'll be speaking with yoga instructor, energy healer, and hypnotherapist, Lori Lee. Hi, and welcome to our Twisted Universe. Today, we're going to be talking with Lori Lee. She is a holistic healer specializing in gentle and restorative yoga, guided meditation, sound and energy healing, and hypnotherapy. Well, wow, Lori, you got a big list of uh, skills there. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so we were wondering, um, you know, how did you get started in all this uh, holistic healing? I mean, what was your journey like? So, well, I it started with the yoga, actually, and um I didn't even start yoga until I was 49 years old. And I had um, a lot of problems, physical problems, because I'd been a hairdresser for a lot of years. And I had um, a lot of problems with the whole right side of my body and just from a couple car wrecks and different things. Um, and then standing all day for several years. And um, I decided at age 49 that I wanted to find a new career. And so I went to college and I was just going to get a general AA to see, you know, like what was out there. And uh, I took some yoga classes and I just said, where's this been all my life? And um, I had never done yoga because I had come from a Christian background and I was taught that it was Eastern and, you know, that, you know, bad things might happen if I did it. So I didn't ever do it. And um, I, one of my instructors told me, you know, because I, everything, I love movement and I love, you know, dance and movement and all of that. And um, my, one of my instructors said, you should try yoga. And so I did, I took it for a PE class and I was just like, man. And, and I learned because I took gentle and restorative. So I learned how to heal my body with it. And so it started with healing my body. And then, you know, with the nervous system regulation that happens and all of that during yoga, and then the spiritual element, I started with, uh, you know, college yoga, and then I got mentored in a traditional yoga studio. And um, that's when the spiritual light kind of turned on, you know, and learned a lot more about the chakras and all of that. Um, and so after the yoga that led into Reiki because you introduced <laughs> me to Reiki and, um, you know, and then you, um, got me to my level two. And, uh, so I started practicing that and, um, then I took some sound healing courses and workshops and um, realized how much that, um, how powerful sound is and vibration and frequency. And that's when I started learning about frequency and all of that. And then um, you also, you've been such a huge part of this journey. Um, you, you, uh, told me one day in Shavasana, and for anybody that doesn't know what Shavasana is, it's the relaxation meditation part of the yoga class that you do at the end. And um, you told me one day after Shavasana, you said, you should do hypnotherapy. You could literally tell someone anything during Shavasana and it would totally go to their subconscious because you, know, you explained to me how I got you into that trance state during yeah. Shavasana. And, um, so I kind of looked into hypnotherapy about, about a year after that. And the funny thing was, is that the school that I went to is in LA and it's like a longstanding um, hypnotherapy college. It's been around for like 50 years. It's like fully accredited, really great college. And it, but it was in LA and, and you ha they had no online accredited program. 
And so I considered actually moving to LA. My youngest daughter and I were thinking about it, but we decided not to. Um, and then the pandemic happened. And when that happened, uh, about a year into it, they sent me a packet and said, hey, we just thought you should know that, you know, we have this fully accredited online program now and we do everything through Zoom and uh, you can, you know, it's fully accredited, same instructors, same classes, it's just over Zoom. And I just took it as a sign, you know, just all the, all of the, you know, everything connected. You know, keep this fell in yeah. place for sure. It worked yeah. out really well. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, I heard that school was incredible. Yeah, it's a great school. You know, like I said, they've been around 50 years and um yeah, so they've yeah, it's an excellent school. So yeah, uh I what has your experience has been um with the hypnotherapy? It's it's a fascinating subject. It is. It is. It just opens up a whole new world. Yeah. You know, the progression of everything, um, you know, just it seemed to make perfect sense because you start to tap into that subconscious mind through, you know, the all, all the other things, you know, through the energy healing and, and yoga and everything, you start to be able to tap into that subconscious mind and you also tap into um down regulating the nervous system, getting into that parasympathetic nervous system, um, which is what heals our body. And that's the state that we get into that our body can heal. So um, yeah, so it just made perfect sense, you know, to um, do the hypnotherapy. So yeah, I just recently got my license. And so I'm really excited. I'm, uh, yeah, I just started my practice. I'm sitting here in my office. <laughs> Have you worked with anybody yet? Yeah. Yeah. I have a few clients. Yeah. And, some, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just wondering, like, what are some things like you've helped people with since starting doing the hypnotherapy? So, uh, weight loss is one of the main ones. Um, and, uh, one of, one of the people wanted to get off of nicotine lozenges. And, um, so, uh, I, I've just started working with her on that. And then, um, what was the other one? Uh, yeah, it's a lot of people are interested in quitting smoking with that's, I think the most, um, common one that people want to, but weight, weight, weight management is another one. Um, I typically won't work on somebody for weight loss, um, uh, without a doctor's referral. Um, and if, and, if I'll work with somebody if it's 25 pounds or less uh, without a doctor's referral. Um, and so if somebody just wants to lose like 25 pounds or less, it's more of a uh, personal, um, personal development, you know, kind of thing where when you get into more than 25 pounds, you know, it gets a little bit more into medical stuff sometimes, you know, so. Um, how, does that, um, how does that go? Like, when you're in a session with somebody and you're doing a weight loss, like what are some of the things that you would be um, covering in your session? So basically what hypnotherapy is, is it's a type of psychotherapy. Um, it is used mainly to initiate change in people's lives. Um, hypnotism and hypnotherapy are a little bit different. Um, they're, they're the same, but they're different. Um, a lot of people think of hypnotism, like, um, the show hypnotism, where you make people do crazy things and, you know, quack like, quack yeah. like. <laughs> and, um, but, um, hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy is a psychotherapy and it's a, a lot, there's a lot more to it than that. And it's, um, you know, people are, are aware of what's happening and you work with their goals and what they want. And you really talk about a lot of, a, of a hypnotherapy session is cognitive. You know, you're talking about things for like the first half of the session, a lot of the times, um, so that you get to know the person and, um, and, you know, what, and I test for suggestibility. So I, you know, there's different types of suggestibility types of you know, everybody's, well, not everybody's different, but there's a few different types of suggestibility. Um, and I don't so, know what there is. 
Could you share? Well, it's um, it's how it's how somebody will take suggestions. So they can be physical, they can be emotional, they can be um, more intellectual. Um, and so um, like some people you can give them like a direct um, suggestion. Some people you have to be a little bit more inferred about your suggestion. So, um, you know, so you have to get to know them a little bit to know how to um, make the suggestions to them. Um, and so I test their suggestibility and find out what type of suggestibility they have um, so that um, I know what techniques to use for induction. And induction is how you induce somebody into trance state. Um, and so um, there's several different types of induction that, uh, that I can do. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just kind of get to know the person and I, there's a, a certain kind of testing that I do before, before the first session um, so that I can find that out about the person and, um, and then, yeah, go from there. And um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Like, you know, it's, it seems, you know, oh yeah, I'm going to go do hypnotherapy, but it's so involved and detailed and yeah. it, it's not just a simple little uh, session. Um, when you're in a session and you're you're making um, suggestions, how would you know if somebody was responding? Um, there's certain body, um, there's certain things that I can tell by um, a person's body, by their eyelids, um, you know, what's happening with their eyes when they're closed, um, dip their breathing, different things like that. Um, yeah, I can tell when they've entered a trance state. And then and sometimes I'll use more deepener, like once they're induced, I can do like deepeners to get them even deeper in um, to trance state. So, yeah. So we talked a little bit, you said there was like three different stages of the mind. Yeah. Three different types of consciousness. Okay. Yeah. What, yeah. There's, what? Um, <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows what that is. Yeah. So um, there's, consciousness, which is when we're awake and aware and mindful, like we're in the present moment, um, you know, and then there's the subconscious, which is um, a lot of people don't know. And, and that's another point about hypnotherapy is that uh, a lot of people think it's this really crazy thing that never happens to people, but actually um, people enter hypnosis on a daily basis. Um, really? The, yeah. The first half an hour that we're waking up, we're actually in hypnosis. So the subconscious mind is we're tapped right into it. And also the half an hour while you're going to sleep. Wow. So if you want to like be suggestible to yourself, you know, to do self hypnotism, um, a sort of self hypnotism what you do on in that first half an hour of waking and that last half an hour while you're going to sleep is super important because your subconscious is wide open at that time wow that's so interesting I didn't know that that's so crazy yeah <laughs> so, so you can like so like setting intentions for your day or something in the morning and then like how your next day is going to go before you go to bed is like a really good thing to do. Yep. And what you want to happen during your sleep, because when you're asleep, you're just, you know, that's your subconscious working and, and your super conscious. So that's another thing. So there's your super conscious, which is your, um, God consciousness. Um, if, um, if you were a Christian, you might've heard of Christ consciousness. Um, you know, the whole uh, oneness of everything in the universe, the whole spiritual connection between everyone, um, the angels, you know, all of that, the universe, all of that, um, that's God consciousness. And when we're able to tap into that, so when we start, so if somebody starts their awakening journey, they get tapped into their super conscious. And so that's how we grow spiritually is by, um, tapping into that super conscious and so the and and bringing the super conscious into our conscious awareness 
is like yeah how do you do that it's like so fascinating <laughs> Is that, just, is that typical? I mean, you, you guys do it. You guys do it. Um, you know, when you get your downloads, you call them. Um, that's just, that's the super conscious. Um, when you start your awakening journey, um, you talked about your um, crystals, your, you know, and, and the, um, you know, how they've affected things. That's because they, you know, they help bring in that spirit, that super conscious, that, you know, wow. Okay. Well, I guess that's like, I don't know. I'm learning a lot today about my crystals actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you have, you have quite a, a collection of crystals, don't you, Lori? I do. I love them. <laughs> yeah. I, I use them. Um, I use them. I use them on a pendulum with a crystal on it. Um, I use a selenite crystal wand, um, in some of my healing, um, sessions and um I have a big chunk of amethyst over there that my youngest daughter got me for Christmas I love that one it's a great big chunk of that's amazing <laughs> and I know uh, selenite is definitely a dark energy buster selenite yes. is my go-to for that for sure and you yeah. got you know it's like it's interesting to know like that what you were talking about previously, like the sounds and frequencies and like, that's kind of where the power from the crystals come from is the frequencies that they emit. So I don't know. It's just, it's kind of crazy to think about. It's like, it's almost like we live in a magical world. Like we always have and didn't know it. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's the super conscious. That's yep. So where's the super conscious, um, lying? Like, is there like a layers of how the, the mind works or how does yeah. that come together? Uh, it's kind of like the, the conscious, uh, the conscious is, is the, you know, your regular conscience is, is awareness. Like you, like I said, your mindfulness, and then there's the subconscious and then kind of I don't, I don't know if I would even say beneath that because I kind of feel like the super conscious, it kind of transcends everything, but we can't get to it if we're stuck in, um, if we, if we're stuck in, in, you know, things, um, in our conscious awareness or our subconscious can block us from, um, tapping into that super conscious. Um, so yeah, so, but it, but it does transcend everything because like I said, it's, once you're tapped in, like yeah. <laughs> once you can tap yeah. into it. <laughs> yeah, but we live in a physical world and we have to be in consciousness, you know. <laughs> so we have to be Wait, we aware can't around in bubble land. <laughs> it, uh, unfortunately, someday, someday. Yeah. I feel like, you know, as we grow, you know, you think about like the people, um, like ancient, you know, yogis from from way back when, you know, who you know, um, could meditate all day and just be like that sage that everybody could just come to. And they're just sitting in their little temple and just being chill and just, you know, I feel like they are in their super conscious all the time, yeah. but we have such a complicated world now, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, it's not feasible for us to do that. A lot easier yeah. to get distracted from those things. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so much stuff that you know, we have to work through um, in our subconscious um, because our subconscious, um, back to that, uh, it really literally takes things in constantly. Our subconscious is always kind of taking things in, but we're in when we're in trance state, it's um, way more suggestible. Um, so uh, a lot of people don't know that TV, television uh, is hypnotic. Um, I mean, I've always thought that, but how is it hypnotic to you people just sitting there? I've always believed we were being hypnotized, but how does it yeah. translate? It, it brings people into a trance state. It's that, um, focus on that, on that. And your subconscious is, you know, your, your awareness of consciousness kind of goes to the side because okay. you're I totally noticed yeah. that too. Like even with, uh, you know, with number one, cell phones, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like you're walking yeah. along and you're like bumping into people or something. <laughs> like, 
Yeah. I mean, hopefully not, but you know, totally, totally. Um, technology for sure. You know, um, it's got its plus sides, but that's definitely. And, um, also, you know, a lot of people don't know too, like, uh, marijuana, um, is a hypnotic drug. So if somebody smokes marijuana, they're automatically, um, suggestible to anything that's going on. Um, so, you know, no shade on marijuana use, but, um, want to be careful what you're doing when you're using it, if you're using it, you know, and what you're, what you're subjecting your to and what you're watching and what you're, yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah. for sure. I am definitely going to be more mindful about what I do, uh, the half hour before I go to sleep, because I often listen to Mm, not exactly relaxing podcasts and things like that. I'm like, you're always keeping yourself in a state of stress, worrying about these things. That's like, and I'm like, if I'm literally being hip- hypnotized by you're putting your, your mind into a state of stress right before you go to sleep, yeah. what you should be doing is listening to like healing frequency music and like, you know, like thinking about good things. I, mm-hmm. I, Absolutely. I am definitely going after tonight. I'm done. (laughs) That's what I do. Actually. I listen to healing frequency music. And then I'm like, you know, I just like keep repeating to myself, like I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be abundant. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be a good mom. I'm going to, you know, like all these things, this, that's usually what I do to actually help myself fall asleep. (laughs) Yeah. I remember for so many years of my life before my spiritual journey before it became really committed to it I would I would leave the tv on all night Mm -hmm. and I just think oh my gosh you know what kind of stuff was going into my subconscious all that time because you don't even know what's on in the middle I'm freaked out by that (laughs) yeah that but like we're all aware there's like subliminal messaging in television you know movies and tv shows like it's there I've seen it you know like while that's playing in the background while you're sleeping, it's like probably way more suggestive and powerful at that point. Who knows what implants are being put in there? (laughs) Yeah. Well, when you're asleep, it doesn't even have to be subliminal. It can just be whatever they're saying. You know what I mean? It doesn't even have to be sneaky because your subconscious is wide open when you're asleep. So Lori, I have no idea. That is, I mean, it's profound what you're saying here. I hope people are, are really listening to that because this could be really impactful on your life. <laughs> I can't sleep with the TV on. I have to be in like a dark room. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad I grew out of that. <laughs> but for those of us who aren't paying attention, like right here, <laughs> I'm definitely going to make a change after today. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Well, you know, because there's, you know, there's got to be a balance. I mean, we have to be aware of what's going on in the world. And, and, you know, it is interesting and very good for us to be open to learning about um, and being aware of what's actually, what's actually happening in the world and, you know, what's going on. And, you know, we can't just pretend like bad things aren't happening or stressful things aren't happening or whatever. Um, So we have to pay attention to those things, you know, but the nervous system uh, can't take that all the time. I mean, it definitely will affect our, our physical, mental, emotional, all that, our, our wellness in general. Um, yeah, for sure. I've been telling you that for so long. I don't know how many times I've literally told her basically the same thing, just different. <laughs> and so yeah, she doesn't listen. I, I, yeah, just that last too. half an hour that first half an hour, that last half an hour while you're going to sleep, that first boy, that would just make a huge difference. Just, just those things, it would make a huge difference and listen to your, all your other stuff, any other time you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because Absorb, I know, you're don't into, absorb. you know, yeah. all that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to check back in with you in a few weeks and let you know how it's going. <laughs> yeah. I would love that. Yeah. That really fun and interesting. Um, I definitely think that hypnotherapy has a place in society. I've, I've heard of really profound healings from it. Um, you yourself has experienced your, your client has lost weight and happy and had a profound shift. You also talked about um, 
some sound healing and other modalities you've been using. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I've been doing the energy work for a few years and the sound healing. And um, so I've had a lot more, um, I've been, you know, with every modality that I've learned, I've had personal huge shifts and huge um, leaps in my awakening process through those modalities, which is why I was like, I really, uh, I, I want to share this with people, you know? And so, um, yeah. Um, so the sound healing, that's again, like the crystals only sound is just more powerful. I mean, if you think about it, uh, well, there's a few cool facts about sound. And one of them is if you think about it, you know, again, going back to uh, the Bible and creation, God spoke and creation happened. So sound creates, you know, and it, um, it's powerful. And, um, Another thing about sound is an uh, interesting fact is that John Lennon actually wrote the song Imagine in the frequency of 528, which is the love frequency. And um, he intentionally did that. And uh, they also, when the Gulf of Mexico, when they did the big cleanup there in the Gulf of Mexico some years ago, I can't remember what year it was, but um, they, they use the frequency 528 for that um, to help with that. How did they do that? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. They must have just had, um, you know, like when, because when I do the river blessings, I take my 528 tuning fork and my, um, and my heart chakra bowl, which is the heart chakra frequency. And um, I use that to, um, to bless the water. So they probably did things like that, but probably more amplified. Okay. you know yeah did it slide? that's cool yeah. yeah but I just take we just take like jars of water out of the river and we bless it with um frequency and intentions and crystals and things like that and then we put it back into the river and so it just goes in and yeah it's, it's actually you know water is it's really powerful to do that even just that little bit can do so much for the water it's it's pretty amazing. Wow. Yeah. The first time I ever saw a river blessing, um, I noticed the change in the river water, like the next week I saw this, there was a river blessing boat that was out. These shamans were out there and they were uh -huh. drumming or doing stuff. I don't know what all they were doing mm -hmm. on the boat, but I was walking along watching them. And, um, the next week when I, cause I go down to the river all the time. And the next week, I noticed the water was like so much clearer. It was crazy. I was just like, wow, that's, and I knew it was, that was why. And so just that one thing, you know, just one day of them going up and down the river and putting those intentions into the, into the water, you know, they collected what they did before. And the reason why I knew about it was because they collected some river water in a jar and they brought it to one of the yoga studios that I, um, the yoga studio where I was mentored and uh they left it there for like a couple of weeks before the river blessing and and the um yoga teachers all asked everybody in the class to bless the water uh you know and then that when they went back into when they went on the boat they took that jar and then they while they were doing all their drumming and all their stuff they were releasing the water back into the river so that's how I got inspired to do the river blessings Oh, well, that's, really, that's cool. really cool. I love that. Yeah, I've been really fascinated by like um, the laws of attraction and intention and like manifesting um, just over like the past couple of months. And I've noticed an insane change in my life since I started doing that. Um, just, you know, calling in like love and happiness for everybody I care about and you know, just trying to put that positivity out into the world as much as possible. Um, I even, I call my best friend on a regular basis because we live, uh, you know, far apart now. Um, and I, I just call her on a regular basis to tell her how great I think she is and like, just speak love onto her. I do that with my sisters. Like I try to spread the love as much as I can. <laughs> 
That's awesome. And it's so powerful and people don't realize how powerful it is. Our intentions and our words are so powerful. I mean, when I do hypnotherapy, it's words that I'm using. I'm using positive intentions um, while they're in a trance state, you know, um, and it's powerful, you know, and um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of interesting to think like what you're doing is you're using the power of intentions to help people and you're helping them set intentions for themselves. And it's like one spark ignites another spark. It's just exactly. That's (laughs) kind of what it's like that saying, uh, be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. Like that's kind of like one of my mantras that I've been following. (laughs) Like so <laughs> yeah and it's amazing how much it helps us to be putting that good energy out to others too it's so powerful for us too you know just to be living in that ultimate purpose you know of yeah. being to help people you know it makes me feel good to make other people feel good like i love making people feel good about themselves and you know, like, I don't know, it makes me feel good when I try to be loving to people I care about. <laughs> like <laughs> living in that, then you're living in that energy. So, you know, we call that in and we, you know, we're like the, you know, like the, uh, you know, like a, well, like a funnel, you know, comes through us and goes to others and, you know, it just goes, yeah. you know, from the universe and goes into us and goes to the others. And when we, and the universe knows that when we're giving it out, that we just, we're going to get more in if we're practicing, you know, self-care and, you know, getting our healing too. Um, you know, that's important. That's why it's, you know, that's why the self-care and healing modalities are so important you know, um, especially when we are giving it out like that, because we have to keep tapped into that super conscious. I've seen a big movement in people like actually working on themselves and like really like taking a hard look at themselves and seeing the things that they don't necessarily like and like working through those things to heal that within themselves. I've noticed a lot of people are really kind of flipping the switch on that recently too. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's just really fascinating to me. Like I, the, the more I think about those things, um, I just think it's cool because I feel like collectively we're all kind of uplifting ourselves in a way, even though things have seemed really bleak and dark recently. And, you know, we're all still kind of trucking along on trying to like raise the vibration of everybody collectively, you know, and I see that I see it happening. And it's, I don't know, it's just really cool to see. It is. It is awesome. There's a lot of people awakening and, um, you know, it seems to kind of, I noticed that it's kind of like one or the other, you know, because so many people are so, um, um, so taken in by all of the trauma that's going on in the world and so um focused on that um that they're not getting the healing that they need um you know so i guess you know that's that's something that's i think really really important is that you know everybody has been through a lot of trauma this past couple of years and some people more than others, but everyone has been through trauma. Every single person on the planet has been through trauma this last two years and a trauma, multiple traumas that have never happened in our lifetimes. And um, people don't realize and people get so focused and even addicted and it not even intentionally addicted, but addicted to um, being focused because something happens to our brain. Um, it's, it is like an addiction, like a substance. Um, when we, you know, are so focused on all of those things, um, it's keeping that our, our central nervous system just in overdrive all the time. And so I think that if there's one thing that I could just really encourage people is to, you know, find healing modalities that work for you, experiment, but find 
reputable, like people that have had, you know, good training that have the proper, um, you know, training and the proper, um, you know, that have, you know, that are recommended highly, um, you know, and things like that, but just, you know, experiment with what kind of different, there's so many healing modalities out there now. And, um, you know, I have a, a cluster of them that I offer, but there's others too. And I just would really encourage people to get their healing to, um, you know, and to, um, you know, to really do that. And to also, as you were saying, as you, you touched on, um, shadow work a little bit, yeah. and that's another thing is, you know, a lot of people don't want to do the shadow work because it's hard. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard. hard. It's hard to <laughs> admit like the things we don't like about ourselves because yeah. in everyone's life, you're the main character, you know, like yeah. you're the main character of your story, just like I'm the main character of mine. And yeah you know, typically the main character's the good guy, you know, and we don't want to think of ourselves as like flawed or, you know, <laughs> oh, I've hurt people in the past. Like we don't want to think about those things because they're hard to think about because you don't want to view yourself in a negative light like that. But it's really important, um, I think, for everyone to to be able to work through those things and understand why you were yeah. in that state in the first place and, and not, you know, not taking yourself too critically, but like accepting that you were that person at that time. And, you know, what, you know, take away what you don't like, remember for the next time. So the next time something like that happens, you can react differently and a little more maturely, I guess, is how I've tried to do things, you know, yeah. in my personal life and my journey. Um, I got really critical on myself, maybe a little bit to the extreme, but, you know, I feel like I have done a lot of self-reflection and I'm kind of like coming out on the other end at this point in my life. And I've never been happier and mm -hmm. I've never felt so secure in myself. Um, and I don't know, it's just really exciting to see like all that hard work pay off. So. Yeah. I love hearing that from younger people too, you know, because in my generation, you know, a lot of this, um, healing modalities and things like that. I didn't know about any of that stuff when I was your age, you know, I was just into, you know, I was into the metaphysical, but, um, just kind of the woo woo. It's fascinating part of it. You know, I didn't really get into the work. And um, I think there's a real balance with that too. Like I said, you know, if you're doing shadow work and you're you're looking, you're doing the self reflection and you're finding the things about yourself that you don't like and or or that are um, not serving your highest good um, or others, you know, or you know, are harming others, um, you know, that's great. But don't be hard on yourself about it. Acknowledge it. Realize that it's not what you want for your life, and then get healing because we hold trauma in our bodies. You know, we hold traumas in our bodies. And, um, you know, like I said, everybody, especially, you know, our, our lives are traumatic. Even when we do a lot of healing, traumatic things can still happen. So we're going to have to go and get more healing, you know, and practice maybe more work, you know, it's kind of in layers sometimes too, but, um, you know, somebody can do a whole lot of healing work and then something like this, what's happened this last two years can happen. And then boy, that sets them into a whole new level of, you know, having to do more work, you know, and I know it sure did for me, um, you know, and so, yeah, I, and I, would, I think I would tell people, you know, it's, it's not very expensive um, to go see a healer. It, mm -hmm. And it's, it's a total investment in your well being and your sense of purpose. And I've only had incredible um, shifting experiences with all the healers, including you, Lori, that I've worked with. Uh, it, I can't stress it enough. I don't think there's any therapies out there. I'm not a medical professional, but um, as far as a spiritual person, um, I've never experienced more benefits than going to an energy healer. Same, same uh, energy work, like 
was better than therapy for me. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it really ended up being that way. Um, something I always tell myself is healing isn't linear. So it's not something, you know, you can't just decide one day that you're going to heal yourself and then you're healed. You can't, you, you know, <laughs> it's just not nice. going to happen. It, it would be nice, but it's just unrealistic because we're human beings and we're, we have flaws and we make mistakes. So, you know, that's just something that I think everybody should be aware of. Like, you know, you may make some leaps and bounds today and trip tomorrow. You know, it, it happens and that's yeah. just life, but you just keep learning from those experiences instead of like, why is this happening to me? Why is this my life? Like being down on yourself about it, being positive is, you know, what can I take away from this instead is so much better in the long run. I think. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Keep on that awakening journey. <laughs> what was that? Keep on, keep going on the awakening journey. Absolutely. Yeah. How would somebody be able to contact you and um, come in and get some of the, the healing techniques that you're so incredibly good at? <laughs> so I just, I just built my first website and um, the website is um, I it'll be, I'm sure it's going to be in your comment section or your, right. The comment section is up what, where it's going to be. Um, so it's I A M yoga dash and wellness 2022 dot my dot Canva dot site forward slash. Um, and, um, the logo looks like this. That's so, so beautiful. beautiful. I love that. Look. <laughs> and, um, so, and same with the Instagram and um, that logo, that logo is on my Instagram too. Um, and, um, I think you're, you're going to try to get the QR code or something on the comments too. For sure. Um, if, um, that's it's, I am yoga and wellness. Um, um, and you can probably find it by Lori Lee too, but it will have that, that logo in the pictures, in the picture, in the main little thumbnail. Um, and then my email is I am yoga and wellness all spelled out. So there's I am Y O G A A N D wellness at Gmail. Um, and then you can text me and my phone number is 360-718-1178. Perfect. Well, I recommend Lori to anybody who's watching. She's in the Portland metro area, Vancouver area for anybody in yep. that part of the country. And I do it online too. Every uh, The hypnotherapy and yoga can be done online. So Perfect. I don't do all that. Some people do that online, but I don't really do the, that, that kind of work online, but I will do the hypnotherapy online. It totally works. And I do private yoga sessions online as well. So That's thank you. amazing. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me, you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Right. Bye. Thank you for watching. Come back soon for more great videos on strange and unusual topics. Psychics, hauntings, energy healing, UFOs, entities, and other twisted shenanigans. Keep listening for a short clearing prayer. We welcome all higher dimensional beings, archangels and spirit guides in love and light. We speak to you from our heart to the creator being. We are shrouded in light and love and are protected. We release any attachments or agreements that are not in our highest good and greatest good. We ask you to go in peace. The creator welcomes you. You are healed and forgiven lifted and enlightened. You are healed and forgiven, lifted and enlightened. 
you are surrounded with the Creator's light and love, safe to leave and ascend to your highest good. We ask the divine beings to help you move into your perfect place. Go in peace and love. Thank you.